This is a viewer's gaming PC. And there's actually, uh, there's nothing, nothing wrong with it. I feel a little out of place here because normally I'd be introducing a broken rig, but this one actually works just fine. We're gonna verify that here. There are a few aesthetic things, maybe just some parts choices that I would like to address. So we've partnered with Corsair to show off their new IQ smart ecosystem and overhaul this viewer's gaming PC with brand new hardware. The goals of this ecosystem are to simplify the install process, which you'll see in this video, and also unify multiple hardware configurations, including AIOs mixed with fans, mixed with power supplies, mixed with power strips, etc. And hopefully by the end of this video, this viewer's gaming PC will look radically different and radically better. Are you ready? Stay with me. The UltraGear 45GR95QE is LG's flagship large form factor OLED gaming monitor with a peak dynamic brightness of 1000 nits thanks to a unique micro lens array. And it's currently $400 off at Best Buy for Black Friday in July. Other LG UltraGear monitors are also discounted on Amazon and these promos are only good until July 12th. Links below for more info. With a 0 0.03 millisecond greater great response time, the 45GR95QE in particular is lightning fast and perfect for high intensity gaming sessions. And when paired with an ultra-wide 3440x1440 resolution and 800R curve, expect some of the best immersion in the business hands down. I use one for my racing sim and the picture quality is absolutely nuts. Nothing on the market looks quite like OLED and LG's been at the forefront of it for years. So what are you waiting for? Crank this thing up to 240 hertz and unleash the eye candy. Once you game on an OLED display this good, you'll wonder why you didn't switch sooner. Now, before we get to the transformation, I do want to run over specs with you, and of course we need to power the system on so that we have a baseline before we start, you know, dissecting things. First off, the CPU in here is a Ryzen 7 1700, the motherboard of course is an ASRock Fatality B350 ITX board, and then the graphics card is an RTX 2080. The power supply, you probably saw that earlier, is an EVGA 650G3. He also has several storage drives, three 2.5 inch SSDs, one of them is behind here, and then we have a single 3.5 inch hard disk drive. And and just so you have an idea of the cable mess we are currently dealing with, this is pretty rough. A lot of this has to do with all the fans attached. If you have RGB running from these fans as well, that pretty much doubles the cabling running from each of those. The AIO up top, it's very easy to become overwhelmed with cables when it comes to RGB implementation. It's one of the reasons why we wanted to switch to all of this new Corsair IQ stuff. You'll see that we can actually cut down on cables dramatically simply by including fans like the new QX120s here. These clip together and don't require daisy chain cable sets to work. And in fact, it gets better. All you need is a single one of these cables here running from each hardware cluster to the system hub for functionality. That is gonna look so much better than uh, all of this back here. The rig fires up without issue, loads straight into Windows, which is a good thing, and that's pretty much all I need to see. Now we're gonna take this rig to the to the garage downstairs, I think, because it's fairly dusty. I've already seen dust bunnies floating around in here, and uh, this office is a bit smaller, but uh, for now I'd like to keep this clean-ish, if possible, since I'm just renting the place. My landlord comes in and sees dust bunnies hanging from the ceilings. It's probably not gonna end well for my security deposit. So let's get this downstairs, and we can get to revitalizing this rig. And yes, don't worry, I saw this too. These fans off to the right are not even lit, which suggests they're probably not wired correctly or just, I don't know, mismatched, not wired at all, not receiving power. This is something else the IQ Link system from Corsair will solve. First things first, we need to remove this graphics card. This is definitely one of the components we will be reusing. I will not, however, be disassembling everything down as far as it will go, like you'll see us do in the PCDC playlist. I simply do not have the time here. I want to get this back to the viewer within a day or so. Next, it was time to remove the CPU cooler, the block specifically over the CPU itself, since we need to uh, salvage the 1700. I removed some of the thermal paste and then very carefully lifted the chip from the socket. This old board, however, will stay in this original case. I also cleaned off the thermal paste from the underside of the AIO just because, well, I wanted it to be clean when we gave it back to them. Next, it was time to remove storage drives. There are a whopping four in this rig. So we have three two and a half inch SSDs and then that single three and a half inch hard disk drive will disconnect state of power and data, slide that out and then move on to cleaning, starting first with this graphics card. I spent the most amount of time blasting this thing with air. This is my electric duster you see me using here. I'll have it linked below if you're interested. But uh, needless to say, there was a lot of dust in this. There was also a lot of thermal paste around the edges of this 1700, clean that off for him. And then I moved on to cleaning his storage drives. This wasn't necessary, but I did want these to look presentable in his new case. 
And that's it. Everything here is fairly clean, especially considering where we started. The case was quite dirty, but these components are ready for a new hole. Now it's time to throw everything we just cleaned here back together. We'll assemble the platform first and throw it into a new case, which I'll show you in a second. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we need to choose a new motherboard. The last thing we want is another ITX board in an ATX case. So we need something like this here, maybe a B550 Aorus Elite, or we see even have a B550 Prime up there. That's a bit cheaper of a board. I think I'm gonna go this route here. It should have some of the features he's expecting. We're gonna gently drop the CPU into this socket. I think I'll give him a fresh BIOS update as well, assuming it doesn't nick support for Zen 1. You always have to watch out for things like that when you have a multi-generational platform like AM4. It's a good thing, but if you don't know what you're doing, you could end up with a system that doesn't post. I totally forgot we'll be replacing this Vengeance LPX kit of DDR4, by the way. I cleaned these for absolutely no reason. We'll put this back in its old board and replace these with Dominator Platinum RGBs. It also doesn't hurt that this new kit is significantly faster than his old one, 4,000 megahertz versus 2666, which should give him a nice bump in performance. This is Ryzen we're dealing with, after all. We'll also be upgrading this viewer's storage. He has three solid state drives in here, but they're all SATA interface drives, which means they're gonna max out at around five or 600 megabytes per second a piece. So this thing right here, MP600 Core XT, is actually a Gen 4 drive. It's not the fastest, it's a low profile kit. We're not going to try to migrate any of his data. We'll just have this installed and he can always swap to this for his boot OS down the line. And now we'll set up some of the mounting gear for the AIO prior to throwing this into the new case. Starting out with just a few standoffs and then these two pieces will connect to the block side of our AIO a bit later. Our case of choice. Oh, this thing is a thick daddy is the Corsair 5000D. So this pays tribute to kind of like the, the larger interior space theme that the uh, viewer was going for previously with his old case. There's still tons of hardware support baked into this. You can mount 360s up front, up top, and it's very airflowy thanks to that large perforated front panel. So then in goes our platform. I'm just gonna hold it underneath since we don't have any cooler yet to grab onto. Gonna sit something like that right there. And with the basic wiring taken care of, we can now move on to fans and the AIO. I think I've gotten things lined up the way I want them. And conveniently, there aren't any cables running from these fans, which is super nice. It just helps with cleanup and it just makes the install process overall so much smoother. Block is tightened down all the way. And then we can do this sweet, sweet peel. Don't worry, I saved this for video. Mmm, so nice. So check this out. Before we throw these into the case, I wanna show you how they work. They simply detach like so. You can pull them apart and you can see we've got male and female connectors on either side that allows you to just slide another fan straight in and that is that you don't need any cables again running from individual fans all you'll have is a single cable running from the top of this to your link box again that's this thing right here corsair calls it the system hub i also like that corsair didn't totally give up on the back sides of these fans we need these set to intake which means we're going to see the frame sides of them but you can see they're super clean just a small logo in the center a small corsair branding off to the bottom right of each and that is it you don't even see wires on the backs of these x frames that's super cool and now we just make good use of these cables included in the kits a few moments later now you wouldn't think it and i know i haven't cable managed anything uh, we don't have the power supply and yet either that you wouldn't think that we would have you know tons of rgb already installed because there are literally like no cables this is the only cable you can see back here just this one cable running to this one box and that is it and then we've got power you've got your usb so you can control everything through the corsair iq software that's it we don't even need this here. This case comes with its own fan hub. We don't even need a fan hub because we don't have standalone fans that aren't gonna be used uh, with the uh, IQ system. So we can go ahead and just remove this. That'll clean up some clutter too. The system hub itself is also magnetic. So you can stick it pretty much anywhere. And all we've done on this side is simply daisy chained the radiator section of this AIO, which has all of the pertinent connections, by the way, running through the tube, which I think is great, uh, connected to the fan setup here. So just this one cable you can barely see is linking both of these devices. And then through this, we've got one more cable at the rear, which I know again, you can't see, connected to this other triple set of fans. And then from there, it runs into the system hub I just showed you. That's it. it it's, it's literally all linked together via two cables. That is pretty impressive. And for someone as OCD as I am, it's gonna be a relief when it comes to cable management. And with the last of our storage drives in here, we can now go about installing our power supply. This is the RM750X shift model, which means all of our connections are actually off to the side of the power supply, not at the rear 
which is actually this side here, where you would typically see them. And an immediate benefit of this is that we can get our brick in here before connecting any of our cables. So uh, if you miss something later on or want to remove a cable, it's not so difficult. Now, I won't lie, this wasn't the easiest cable management session, but this has nothing to do with RGB or the IQ system. This has to do with the SSDs and the hard disk drive. Having four different SATA data cables, and then I had to somehow daisy chain the SATA power cable to all four drives. That was a bit difficult. Uh, the fact that the ports on this power supply are sideways is actually really helpful. There's plenty of space between the edge of the power supply and the edge of the right panel in this case. Uh, and we only, again, had one single RGB cable stemming to this hub. It would have been so much more difficult if we had, what, it would have been uh, six cables just from these three fans, another six from the three fans up top, plus maybe a couple more cables from the AIO itself. You're talking over a dozen cables to deal with on top of this. So yeah, the IQ system definitely saved my butt here. Now on this side of the equation, things are also coming together nicely. You can see most of our cabling front panel and whatnot is down here, USB 3.0 type C. We do have a few SATA data cables to run. The 24 pin is here. And of course you can't even see the eight pin EPS up top and our single cable connecting our fans up top here to our radiator. This leaves only the graphics card to install. And uh, I've been on the fence about how I want to install it because well, we don't have a capture card or anything else in here, and I want to take advantage of the empty space in this rather large case. So I'm thinking we do a vertical bracket. I just don't know if I have one. Aha, I do, and it's going to slide in nicely right there. We can tuck these cables here from the AIO behind it, so these will be hidden, and then the card will sit sideways so we can show off the pretty mirror-like finish. I do apologize, the graphics card is just chilling on the ground. Be very careful if you do that. Got to be very careful now. The card is... Set pretty much like that. Oh yeah, that looks that looks really good. Just gotta tighten it down. Connect power up top. And here we are. Wow, this thing is this thing is chunky. This is such a night and day difference. What a difference. Just unifying the types of hardware used, uh, you know, choosing a larger motherboard, turning the graphics card sideways, and then of course tying it all together with Corsair's ecosystem. It looks so darn good in here. I mean, you compare it to what we started with, this honestly doesn't even look like the same rig. Cable management was really my only gripe, and that was not Corsair's fault in the slightest. The 5000D has plenty of breathing room behind the motherboard tray. I just had, again, tons of storage drives to take care of. But once that was all settled, I mean, everything else fell into place so nicely. So be sure to check this stuff out if you haven't already in the video description. I'm gonna have all the Corsair IQ stuff there if you want to totally revamp your rig the way that we did for this viewer. I'm going to try my best to get his reaction to this but uh, I, I, I don't I don't know for sure I, I can't make any guarantees if he doesn't want to be on camera I totally understand that but uh, I will at least try for you guys so if there's maybe a minute remaining in this video or 30 seconds or whatever stick around for that I think it'll be worth it but uh, for now the last thing we need to do is make sure that it turns on check all of our wiring there's not much of it when it comes to the RGB because again of how simple it is with the new IQ stuff but uh, we do want to do our due diligence so let me grab my portable monitor now we might have confused the system just a tad by installing a blank M.2. It's brand new, of course it has nothing on it, but it still might try to boot into that. So the system might not load into Windows, but at the very least it should post. We can hop into the BIOS and make sure that all of our drives are detected. So we've got power on at the rear. Oh, look at that, our DDR4 is already lighting up. I love the way Dominator Platinums look. And then here we go, power up front. Okay. We've got signs of life. Wow. Wow, look at how good that looks. The system might not be liking the fact that we swapped the motherboard and the DDR4, so uh, it's probably gonna power cycle a few times, train memory, and hopefully we get some, yes, there it is, that's a post. And would you look at that? It also loads straight into Windows, so uh, that made it easy for us. We will hop into the BIOS, we'll enable XMP form, DOCP, make sure that uh, you know the basic stuff is taken care of. Other than that, the viewer should be good to go. And yes, in case you're wondering, the viewer can most certainly hop into Corsair IQ software and change all of the RGB in this rig. I told him I didn't want to sign into the OS because, well, that's his data. It's 
it's sensitive, and unless I see a need to log into someone's computer, I, I try not to. Uh, so I'll just leave the RGB the way that it is. It's actually pretty cool looking as is, although I'd probably want to sync up the DDR4 there. Uh, but all around, really happy with the way this looks. Just know that the IQ software is being revised all the time, and they're adding new features, so if you ever get bored of whatever look you're currently running, you can always change it up later. So that is a wrap. Again, really happy with this. If you want to find any of the hardware used in this video, again, check the video description. It should all be down there. I'm going to end this video assuming I don't get an on-video reaction from the viewer, but again, stay to the end just in case it's there. If you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Relevant links are down below, not just for the build, but also for things like our Patreon, if you want to support us there, our public Discord server, that's totally free to join, uh, and then some social media links if you want to, I don't know, engage that way. And I'll let you know that this viewer actually reached out um, in response to a tweet that I sent out. I was looking for someone in the local area who wanted to have their rig totally revamped, you know, like a Pimp My PC thing, an homage to Kyle, who I deeply miss in this space. Kyle, please come back. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to kind of try to revamp a rig out there and uh, obviously didn't want to have to deal with shipping. So I sent a tweet out and uh, this viewer was very quick to respond, which I am appreciative of. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you guys again for watching and thanks for learning with me. Okay. I got him here. He's okay with being on video. That's him in his car, and uh, let's show him the rig. So here it is. I've got it in the bed of my truck, and Mr. Scott over there. How's it going, Scott? Hey, thanks for being okay with uh, being on video. I know that the viewers really wanted to see your reaction to this one, so uh, I appreciate you. So I got it set up right here, and uh, definitely doesn't look like the same rig anymore. Uh, no, that's completely, <laughs> totally different. I had no idea what to expect, but that looks sick, man. Yeah, so I got, you know, your, your main hardware still in here. You still got the 1700, still got the graphics card. Um, I did upgrade the motherboard so that it wasn't, you weren't running an ITX board now in a large case anymore. Uh, you've got uh, a lot of Corsair fans. They're all linked together and actually super simple to link these up. Uh, their new system only requires one cable from each cluster of hardware. So the cable management honestly was a breeze back there. I think it looks good. Vertical with the GPU is pretty sweet. You, you and, dig uh, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those new fans, even the AIO, is pretty tight. And so yeah, it looks good too with these fans turned around because usually it looks pretty ugly when they're, you know, you're seeing the backsides of them. Yep. Those are set to intake, but uh, yeah, I think that looks really clean. So that's a 5000D, should have great airflow. And all of your uh, old components that we didn't reuse are in the original case still that I brought as well. So uh, so yeah, I'll send you anyway. Thanks again for, for being a, a good sport and allowing me to revamp this for you. And uh, we will see you in the next one.